guys and welcome back to my channel. Just before we get started on this video here, if you are interested in seeing a slowed down version with voiceover, please do go on over to my Patreon. The link is in the description of this video. So this video is a tutorial of sorts. It's an eye tutorial just to show you the basics of how to draw a realistic eye. So let's get started. So you'll be able to see here that I'm going straight up in a kind of hill, but when I get to the middle, I curve it off quite immediately and keep it rounded, keep it almost as though you're trying to draw a ball at the top there. But then when you come back down on the right, this is obviously the person's left eye. When you come down on the right there, make it slightly more rounded and um, a little bit shorter. Now keeping in mind that everybody's eyes are different shapes. So keep that in mind and definitely pay attention to the reference picture that you're drawing. But in general, this is like a typical shape of an eye. So if you're just trying to draw an eye, you'll be able to follow this picture here. So all the way across the bottom there, it's very slanted. It goes kind of even all the way across and it goes back up to the, to the right side. Um, and there we go, I've drawn like a horizontal line that is almost exactly horizontal. Um, and that's to show you that the two top lines here on the reference image that I was drawing were almost to an exact horizontal line. So there's a guide for you. Um, use everything as a guide. Measure things off of everything when you're drawing. Um, this is how I manage to do outlines and I've learned to do outlines because I measure one part of the face from another part of the face. And this is how you keep the proportions together. So pay attention to things that line up and distances between the eyes and stuff like that compared to the distance and the length of the eye sideways. So keep all of these things in mind. Now on this part, I'm just showing you that the eye is never an exact circle. You will never see an eye unless somebody looks stunned or they're pulling a certain face and stretching their eyes. You're not gonna see an exact circle. You might see the bottom of the circle, the iris, a little bit higher than the bottom lid, but it just depends on where the person's looking. But if they're looking straight at the camera in the picture, the eye, you're gonna notice that the iris goes above the eyelid. So the top eyelid is actually covering the top part of the iris. So keep that in mind and um, always try to almost draw outside of the circle, but make sure you keep the line very faint because you will need to rub it out afterwards. So here, I'm again following the reference picture, but um, the, the highlights of the pupil, it all depends on the lighting with the photograph that was taken. It really does depend. If there's a lot of lighting or circular light or um, you know squared light, that, that is a lot to do with the highlight of the eye and what shape it's going to be. So pay attention with each eye that you draw, what kind of shape the um, highlight is. Now, usually I would have drawn the, the pupil first and then I would have gone to draw the highlight. But just because I've done the previous outline, I could, I could, I could do it that way. Um, but when I did the outline, I was more careful. I was doing the pupil. Now you can see the pupil in this picture is more to the left inside of the iris, inside of the circle. So keep in mind all of these tiny little details. This is how when people draw a picture of somebody, it doesn't always look exactly like them because they, they take certain shortcuts. We tend to think we know what an eye looks like while we're drawing it. And we will go a little bit off of the reference. And it's important to go back if you do that. It's important to go back and just make changes. You can't just keep going. You have to go back and make changes and stay exact to the reference picture and try and follow it exactly. So now I'm just showing you here the distance between the eyelid and the top of the eye. Now you can see that I drew an extra little line going across the top of the eyelid. That is the actual eye lip. Now, when you see people drawing eyes with eyelashes coming straight out of the eyelid, it's just not realistic. You need to have a slight lip there, which is like a space where all of the um, eyelashes come out from, whether it's a little bit higher, a little bit lower, but all around that lip is where the eyelashes actually come out from. They don't come out from underneath the eye. They actually come out from the lip, which is slightly visible. So I've done that little lid there just for that reason. And I've drawn the eyelid here. Um, everybody's eyelid again is very different some people don't have eyelids at all some people's eye creases down to, to almost nothing some people you know older people that eyelid will have a lot more creases in younger people it will be a lot more plumped and a lot more rounded and um, in general everybody has different shaped eyelids and even if somebody has a similar eyelid to this if they're pulling a certain face then the eyelid's going to look different so you have to keep all of that in mind Again, following the reference, this person had the extra crease going across the top of the eyelid. So I decided to draw that crease in. Um, not all eyes have it. Again, 
everybody's eyes are different. So you'll find with whatever drawing that you're trying to, whichever photograph you're using as a reference, um, you just have to follow what you're seeing. But that part of the eyelid there was um, very dark, very, very shadowed. I just did it in pencil here. I've got a habit of doing that. I could have just gone in with a black pencil, but I wasn't ready to do that yet. Um, so here you can see I'm darkening straight across that line. Now, when you're drawing around the iris, it's important to pay attention to how dominant that line around the iris really is. I find that a lot of the time I'll use a blending stump to go around the iris because sometimes it can look blunt, but it's a little bit blurred out as well. So um, again here, I'm just adding pencil when I should have really been just going in with the black pencil, but I wasn't ready yet. I hadn't got the black pencil out. And again, this can be another habit that takes up more time, but I do like to lay down a base of pencil. And I only really use a 2H and a, I think it was a 3B. Yeah, it was a 4B pencil that I use for this. Um, so I was just really laying down some graphite. I just wanted to have some darker area there as a guide, just to remind me all of that area is gonna be black. So I do like to start laying down some graphite just because I need that as a guide really. When you're drawing, you're paying attention to so many different things that it's important to have some sort of guide. So here I've started out with a 4B pencil and then I just stopped and grabbed the black pencil because I'm trying to stop myself from taking up extra time. If I'm doing something that's really not necessary, I have to check myself and just be like, Marie, come on, stop that now. Now on this image, the pupil was completely black, but I find when I'm drawing realistic drawings, a lot of the time the pupil isn't really black. Now because the reference picture was a close-up of eyes, I suppose it had been edited and touched up, so uh, the pupil was completely black, but in general, I usually just use the black pencil to lay down a lot softer in certain areas and blend with the darkest art parts of the pupil. It's surprising but you will find that the pupil is not always black depending on lighting, depending on the picture and, and, and the reference that you're drawing. So here we go blacking out that, that pupil and then I'm going to darken all of that area above where I would laid down some pencil. Like I said that was just my guide. The good thing is that I use Polychromos Black Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil. It's a black colored pencil and it blends brilliantly with normal pencils and graphite in general. So I, I can be a little bit more confident when I'm laying that down. Now you can see I'm laying it down lightly. I apologize for the shaking. I think my table is um, pushed up against the actual frame that I have that holds my camera above. So I need to sort of adjust all of that. But um, very slight shaking there. But just remember there's a slight highlight out there to keep that highlight um, out. I am doing it quite light as you can see because I'm aware that I'm going to have to blend when I start colouring in the iris with graphite. I'm going to need to blend that black into it so I'm just taking my time and in general it's good not to just throw down black pencil as hard as you can. Take your time, it does create a lot of shine as well. Um, this pencil creates less shine than others but it can still create shine and the more pressure you lay down on the paper with the graphite or with the black coloured pencil the more shine you're going to get really. Um, so I'm just jumping a little bit all over the place here. I'm just using that black pencil now that I've got it out to blacken out the areas that I've used pencil to darken out before so really just going over the guides and making sure that um, I keep that in mind remember to black it out um, I was just going to draw the inside of the eye but I decided to draw around the eye just show you how I would really draw it at my own speed um, how I'm comfortable so I've jumped on in with the blending stump here. I absolutely love my blending stump. You can see the state of it. I haven't bought new blending stumps for so long because the good thing about blending stumps is all of this, the, the graphite that stays on them, uh, you can use it again. I mean, I didn't rub this on any graphite pencil or, or anything like that. I just straight away picked it up and started using it. So I love the using just what's left on the blending stump a lot of the time. Um, depending though, if you've used it to blend out a lot of graphite, then it may be, it may be too dark. So I kind of rub it on a bit of paper first. Um, but I'm just using that to block out some lighter areas. Um, obviously you can shade it with a pencil, but I don't want to always, you know, shade with a pencil and I don't want to leave any blunt lines. So you have to be careful when you're laying down graphite with a pencil that you're going to shade or blend in. It's, you know, you have to be careful not to keep leave any lines. So a blending stump is really good for that. Just to lay down some graphite um, in an exact area. Just, just pushing it down where, trying to pay attention to the tones as well. You know, in general, we can, kind of just throw down graphite everywhere but you have to compare one area to another area and if a certain area is lighter then um, go ahead and darken another certain area or whatever but just compare it to the other parts that you've shaded, shaded and shadowed out. 
So here I'll just add in more detail to the corner part. Um, in that little part of the eye, there, there tends to be a lot of detail. You're gonna get a few highlights, definitely in that area, because that area of the eye always stays quite moist. So you're gonna have certain highlights there. You're also gonna have different tones of graphite. So I hadn't finished drawing it, but I did just lay that down as a basis so I can go back to and I still again everything's a guide I always put down little guides the more you do the further you've got in the drawing so <laughs> you're gonna find that underneath the eye there's always gonna be a slight little highlight even um, again it's just a line of moisture within the eye you know the eye always stays wet we're always blinking to stop the eye from drying out so there's always gonna be a certain amount of moisture in the eye which creates highlight so pay attention to that at the bottom of the eyelid there there usually is at the bottom where the actual iris is um, there's usually some sort of highlight so here we go with the actual iris now this is probably the most important part of the drawing of an eye because everybody's iris is different this one wasn't too difficult to draw some are very detailed and very difficult to draw so you're going to see that i'm just laying down lots and lots of, of pencil i'm just getting guides again everything is guides with realism i'm just laying down some guides of where certain shadows are and um, just to get that base of graphite down it's important to get the base of the graphite down while you're drawing it's very important um, i tend to blend as you can see and then go back in with the pencil and add more detail and blend again this is all layering layering is repetitive and uh, it can it can be a lot of work when you're not used to it i think the more you draw realism the more you're used to repeat in certain actions but it all helps with the realism towards the end so you can see here I'm leaving a little highlight a little highlighted area there just a little line towards on the right of the iris that was a slight highlight that I'll be keeping um, the little outline for um, as I keep drawing it wasn't completely highlighted so I don't want to leave it completely bright I've just got to find a way to blend it all in so again I'm laying down more shadows more shadowy areas in the areas where in this eye there were shadows so it's all pattern of behavior you just need to go over and over until you're getting the realism that you expect so throwing down lots and lots and lots of graphite here uh, this is a 4b pencil and um, i don't really go much higher than the 4b or maybe 5b so i was laying that down and pretty loosely just to make sure still following where the shadows are but just to make sure that i was able to blend in this blackened out area at the top there um, so i wanted to have some heavy graphite just to blend in that black pencil um, I'm always more confident blending black pencil into more of a heavy graphite. So also using the black pencil, I'm laying down some, I mean, I was doing this pretty fast. I mean, this is still, let me show you some real speed. So you can see here that I'm going really, really, pretty slow I mean this is fast for me because I was um, obviously when you're using a black pencil you have to be a little bit more cautious but that was the real speed so speeding things up for you again um, I just want to say in this video I have to speed things up and um, this did take about three hours to draw three to four hours I'm not sure uh, the video footage is still downloading so we'll know <laughs> we'll know soon enough I think it was about three hours so I stood up last night drawing this picture and um, when it comes to that iris I really I, I wasn't happy with it at the end because I'm used to doing really really detailed realism but I'm having to learn when to stop here um, that the level of realism that I got it to was enough so next we're going to get out the Mono Zero Eraser. I still get people asking me if this is a pen. It's not. It's an eraser. Uh, the Mono Zero Eraser is by a brand called Tombow. And um, you can buy them anywhere. I, I get the refills and whatnot on Amazon. So um, you should be able to get them at any real good art store. Um, I tend to buy my art equipment online because it's hard to get everything that you need in one place. So... Um, anyway here you can see I've done a slight circle inside the iris but that was actually on the reference picture so it wasn't dominant but again I'm going over with the pencil just trying to tidy it all up it's good to use an eraser for your highlights but I found really really useful while I was doing this iris was to use the kneaded eraser uh, to blot out to pick up some of the graphite in certain areas so I did darken up the whole of the iris to a certain extent finding the shadows roughly and then I used the kneaded eraser just to dab and lighten certain areas so um, I decided at this point to, to darken the white of the eye now the white of the eye is never white it's usually a darker shade of grey um, in certain areas you'll find around the outside of the white of the eye is usually darker but I did darken that area of the iris and if you need to lighten any areas use your pretty rubber uh, get out the kneaded eraser and dab in all of these areas um, make sure that you keep your there's certain little lines keep your eyes pinned on all the fine little details you're gonna find there's certain little highlighted white lines very faint but they're gonna be there 
So now laying down some graphite onto the eyelid. Now on the reference picture that I was drawing, the woman did have um, eyeshadow on her top lid. So um, I did do the outside, the right side of the, of the eyelid a lot darker, but that was due to the eyeshadow. So this eyelid had a lot of creases in, um, as well as it was a very detailed, um, you know, like high definition picture. It was um, a large image size and you could see all of the creases in the top lid. Now, I didn't want to go into too much detail. I just wanted to show you how to draw a realistic eye, but while not being over the top and too detailed, but also just little tricks on how to make an eyelid look a little bit more detailed. So I was just throwing down some graphite and now I'm darkening the eyelid because I know I'm going to do the eyelashes out of that eyelid there. So I've just darkened that little line above the eye just to make sure that I've got a guide for when I start doing the eyelashes so now I'm using my mono zero eraser just to highlight certain areas now this is the trick to making some detail or creating some detail on that eyelid it was very easy to do um, you don't have to be too specific I really wasn't following the exact creases of the eyelid like I usually would I was just trying to figure out a quick way of creating some definition on the top of the eyelid so if you just create some lines and erase some lines and also try and create the illusion of a crease the way to do this is to highlight an area with the mono zero eraser and then just darken around that highlighted area and also different tones here and there and try and create the illusion of some texture on the eyelid so here I've decided to start jumping in with the eyelash I was very free with the eyelashes I would usually start with a pencil and then go over with the black pencil but these eyelashes had a lot of mascara on and they were very dark all the way to the tip so I was quite confident to go in with this black pencil and darken the eyelashes so moving down further down now with the blending stump just to create a little bit of an eyelid now you can see eye lips sorry at the bottom of the eye the top of the eye always remember there's a little lip where the eyelashes come from they don't come from inside or underneath the eyelid they, they come from just the tip of the eyelid which is like the lid so when you blink these are the bits that touch together so to create that illusion I've just added the the graphite down with the blending stump underneath the eyelid and faded it out to the right and then I've left a highlight in between and darkened another line underneath to the right so you can see that it kind of creates the illusion of a rounded um, lip at the bottom of the eye so this is all part of the illusion with drawing it's all about creating the illusion with different tones highlights and darker areas for depth so just adding all the finishing touches now obviously adding the bottom lashes I did that with a pencil it was a 2H pencil pretty sharp I will go over those lashes again with the black pencil so here I am with my white pen I've been using this for a while I'll link in the description the name of the white pen so if you're interested look in the description of the video but yeah using that highlight is brilliant for little moisture marks little highlights in the eye that was absolutely brilliant for that and that's the only thing I would really use it for um, I never used to use it until I kind of came to terms with the fact that the paper that I use isn't brilliant white so I prefer to use it just to give it that extra touch so finishing touches now you can see I'm going over the whole drawing just to tidy it up adding lines here using the eraser there and just basically tidying up the whole of the drawing I did sharpen that black pencil at this point and I was happy to go over the eyelashes I think I did use a pencil afterwards just to tidy them up um, but yeah that's the eye tutorial for you guys I hope you've enjoyed this video please remember I am on Instagram artist Marie Lowe um, and also to add me on snapchat if you're on snapchat and please do take a look at my patreon I have the extended version of this drawing on my Patreon with voiceover and other than that I'll see you in my next video.